Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today I'm reviewing Town of Evening Calm, Country of Cherry Blossoms by Fumio Kwano, a title that is cataloged as historical fiction and slice of life. Originally published in 2004, this English edition was published by Ja Press and Last Gasp in 2006. Content notes for nuclear bomb, mass death, radiation poisoning, and character death. Because this book is rather short and the focus is not entirely on the violence, the style used in the flashback is more cartoony than the average style and passes rather quickly. Moving along to the bio section, quote, Fumio Kono is a Japanese manga artist. She was born in Hiroshima in 1968 and began drawing manga when she was in junior high school. She states that she began drawing manga because her parents would not often buy her manga. Kono studied science at Hiroshima University and moved to Tokyo, becoming an assistant to Katsuyuki Toda. Aki Morino, and Fumiko Tanagawa. She graduated from University of the Air in 2001 with a major in humanities. End quote. What kinds of keywords came to mind? Family, illness, survival, guilt, and life goes on. The official synopsis is, quote, a bestseller in Japan. This beautiful award-winning manga appears in English for the first time. What impact did World War II and the dropping of the atomic bomb have on the common people of Japan? Through the eyes of an average woman living in 1995, a Japanese artist Fumio Kono answers these questions. Kono's light, free style of drawing evokes a tender reflection of this difficult period in Hiroshima's post-war past. As the characters continue with everyday life, the shadow of the war and the atomic bombing linger ghost-like in the background. Kono's beautiful storytelling touches the reader's heart, but is never overly sentimental. A widely embraced bestseller in Japan, where the work was also controversial, Town of Evening Calm, Country of Cherry Blossoms, is the winner of several prestigious awards, including Grand Prize at the 8th Pan Media Arts Festival 2004, and the New Life Award at the 9th Osamu Tezuka Cultural Prizes 2005. Town of Evening Calm, Country of Cherry Blossoms, is made up of interconnected short stories. End quote. Asterix. According to an interview with, with the co-owners of Jaw Press, the word controversial here just means widely discussed, which seems odd, but whatever, I guess. After initially finishing this book, I found it a bit difficult to follow in parts. I will admit to picking this book up in part because it is short, but as much as that is a strength, it also felt like a bit of a weakness, particularly because the entire runtime is not dedicated to a single story, but three that are more or less related to each other. It took a lot of review reading for me to exactly figure out how they were all related, but it might be a me problem. I don't know. After I finished reading this volume, I was struck by what an odd time it is to be reading this particular book. It certainly felt a bit more potentially universal than it would have, at least to me, if I had read it when it first came out, on the brink of potentially so many nuclear disasters and or attacks and mutually assured destruction. This is also a bit of a follow-up to my recent reread and re-review of Trinity, a graphic history of the first atomic bomb by Jonathan Federvorm. Highly recommend. The one question I had when I started googling reviews of this volume was how people felt about the perspective. Because while being born in Hiroshima, Kono is pretty upfront about her lack of connection to the dropping of the bomb. I mean, the book made sense to me, but I have an infinitely less substantial connection to any sort of instantaneous, well also drawn out, mass death event. What I came across was fairly interesting, along what seems to be short but general praise, along with a number of awards and top comics of the year inclusions. We have a review on a site I had never heard of before by a person I had never heard of before that took a more critical stance towards the book with a pretty lengthy comment section. Although I should note that they have written for some other mainstream comic sites and cite a fellow detractor who has a PhD in sociology and done research into manga publishing. TLDR, this book is part of a tradition of books that focus exclusively on the civilian victims of the bomb blast and ignore the context of the larger war and atrocities perpetrated by the Japanese government, thus painting Japan as an innocent victim. While I don't have a larger context for how this person's opinions intersect with my own on a larger 
scale. One of the flags against them is that most of the people who shared this opinion in the review and the comments seem to believe that dropping the bomb was totally justified and necessary. I do not share this opinion. That said, I am also pretty ignorant of many of the details of the Sino-Japanese War and the country's involvement in World War II. I don't know nothing, and my general impression is that both were pretty brutal. I would highly recommend Grass by Kwon Suk Jenri Kim, about a Korean girl forced into sexual slavery for the Japanese Imperial Army as part of Japan critical comics I have read about that time period, but I do think there is a distinct divide between civilians and governments, no matter what those governments, and even sometimes civilians, say. That said, tragedies are often used to propagandistic ends. I guess as someone who tries to read diversely and educate myself, I am going to try and dig a bit deeper into this particular topic. Barefoot Jen came up as a slightly more government critical series that covers a similar time period, although the target audience is children. There's also apparently The New Sun by Taro Yashima, but that might be a bit difficult to get my hands on. Art-wise, it definitely leans a bit towards the simple side, but I felt like that worked pretty well. There's some interesting but easy to follow page layouts and emotive faces. As far as representation went, it was fairly one note. All main characters are women and girls, which is nice. The heterosexuality was assumed background, but didn't overshadow it too much. The mental load of surviving such a mass death event and the physical toll of radiation sickness are both explored a fair amount. By y'all, keep reading and organized and capitalist depression. And literally graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.